folks. So real quick, I wanted to show you around a new practice tool that I recently created that I really like personally because it's simple, uh, very effective, and a lot of fun. And so the holy trinity of practice tools. And like any good practice tool, it can really accelerate your progress on the banjo, and I highly recommend using it or something like it a lot uh, when you practice. And here I'm gonna give you nine ideas for how you can make the most of it. So the tool itself is called Beats for Banjo. And like I said, it's a simple tool consisting of a backing drum track. Each one played at a different tempo or beats per minute. So you'll see here the beats per minute listed. So you can select the one you wanna work with. And since I've created these, I've pretty much used them every day myself uh, because I find them so much fun to play with and so useful, which is part of the reason I decided to put them out there for others to use. So the rhythm uh, that's played, it's a rhythmic backbone that's the foundation for so much um, banjo music. And because of that, a great way for you to work on uh, your timing and rhythm so that you're emphasizing things in the right places. So the tracks essentially serve many of the same purposes that a metronome would, but are, in my opinion, easier to use, um, more specific to banjo playing, and a lot more fun to play with. So all the benefits of the metronome uh, and a lot more. And another nice thing about them is that no, they're useful no matter where you are or where you're, what your playing level. So whether you're an absolute beginner or an advanced player. And in fact, if you're just getting started, getting in the habit of uh, using these now will really speed up your progress in addition to helping you, uh, helping to ensure that you don't develop bad habits. Um, bad habits with rhythm and timing are probably um, the most common and the hardest ones to undo. So I'm just going to give you a few ways, uh, nine ways in fact, I recommend uh, using these tracks. So the first is just to practice new skills and techniques. So if you're especially in the early phases of learning and still are building your um, technical foundation, you can use these to help you build those skills. Uh, for those who are in the Breakthrough Banjo course, uh, you can use these to work on the early exercises and drills. And I'll also be adding some new uh, drills to use specifically with these tracks for Banjo Level 1, 2, 3, and so on. As I've talked about before, when you're adding new skills, you want to develop them to the point where they've become automatic. Um, and these drum tracks are the perfect way to test for that or to test for automaticity. Because if you can play whatever it is you've just learned while you are focused on playing along with the um, beat on the track, then and the skill doesn't degrade, then you know it's become automatic. So for example, if you're working on some fretting skills like slides and pull-offs, you could use it for that. Essentially kind of all of the foundational technical skills, it's great for reinforcing those. The second uh, use would be to help develop control over your picking hand, uh, the right hand for most folks. One of the big keys to fingerstyle banjo is the picking hand. So making sure that you can control your picking so that it's falling right on the beat as it should is hugely important with the banjo. Um, that's what gives fingerstyle banjo its driving sound. So you can work, use it to work on all manner of picking patterns and really training your right hand to develop super soft. third thing uh, you can use it for would be practicing your chord changes. Again, if you're earlier on and you're still learning those chord shapes, like your uh, F shape, your D shape, and the bar shape, it's a great tool for learning that. So you could just, you know, strum along or play any simple picking pattern you want. Uh, and then practice changing chords in time with the beat, uh, going from like the G shape to the beat sh to the F shape to the bar shape and so on. And 
then fourth use would be to practice backup. So similar to practicing chords, um, it's great for working on your backup, for working on moving up and down the neck in time with the beat. Um, essentially here, you could invent any chord progression you want and then practice that progression. So just lay out a chord progression and then start to see if you can follow it along. So you can pick out the chords uh, using the backup patterns that we've discussed and then practice connecting the chords using the connecting uh, tones we've talked about. The fifth uh, use would be to practice licks. So this is a perfect tool for practicing new licks you've learned, um, as uh, I reviewed in the recent workshop on banjo licks. And it's really great for helping get those under your fingers till those become automatic and that you can insert them at will in the spots where they go. Um, so they'll become second nature. So you can work on things like fill in licks. <laughs> Ending licks. All right, number six would be working on new tunes. So naturally, this is a great way to practice a tune that you've just learned. So after you've learned a tune, uh, pick a tempo. Probably want to start with something slower and then see if you can keep up. And if you can't, move to a slower tempo. If you can't keep up at all, then it's time to go back to the woodshed and, and work on particular parts. So it's a great stress test for testing whether you really know a tune. Um, it's also a really great way to quickly run through your repertoire of tunes. So if you keep a list of tunes that you've learned, uh, you can just kind of plow through each one of those in succession. So really an easy way to quickly reinforce uh, what you've learned already. seventh use would be to use it with the labyrinth technique. So speaking of uh, being a good stress test, this is an, an ideal tool for using the labyrinth technique that I've talked about. So here, what you do is first play a song you've learned or are learning like I just talked about, and then you'll oftentimes almost always find a spot that's that's uh, a little trickier than the rest of the song, maybe just a measure or two. So you then take those uh, measures and loop them over and over and over again, starting again with the slowest tempo you can play and then gradually increasing the speed. And as I've talked about before, this is one of the most essential techniques for really uh, exponentially increasing the speed of your progress. And doing this sort of thing, you'll actually turn uh, weaknesses into a strength. So oftentimes those little pieces of a tune that you end up rehearsing like that become your strongest parts of that tune. The eighth use would be to help you to break free from tab. So it's a great tool if you're trying to build your ear and your memorization skills, which require a good ear. So if you struggle with remembering songs or you feel dependent on tablature, or you're just trying to get away from tab and build your ear, um, using this tool in conjunction with the Brain Joe tune learning system that I've talked about and that I'll link to in the description uh, is a great way to do so. So here, what you do as you're learning a tune is learn a chunk of a song, then see if you can play that chunk from memory along with the backup track. And so you loop that section over and over until it's second nature. Once it is, move on to the next part of the song and do likewise, and then ultimately linking it all together, seeing if you can play the entire song uh, without, any, without looking at the tab at all, along with the backing track. And then the last and ninth 
uh, suggested use here is to practice jamming. So obviously this is a great tool for practicing jamming, uh, including practicing improvising. So taking a song that you know, um, playing a break, then playing a backup part, then playing another break, and so on, just like you do in a jam. And again, you could do this with all of the songs in your repertoire. Uh, you could also uh, practice um, what you do when you don't know a song. So again, just take any per chord progression you want and play along with it as you would in a jam. So playing a backup part, then, then uh, inserting a, a lead break and so on. All right, so those are nine ways uh, to use this tool, uh, the Beats for Banjo, to help practice and really accelerate your progress. Hope you'll, hope you'll find these as fun as I do to play along with. And if you are watching this uh, on YouTube, there's a link to the playlist of all of the tracks in the video description. You can also find them at fingerstylebanjo.com forward slash beats. All right, enjoy. Enjoy.